<laughs> yeah, man. Listen. First, there was little computer people. Then there was little big adventure. Then, after that, there was little bow wow. And then there was little Richard. And now there is little sound DJ. <laughs> Been around for a while, actually. Invented by the Swedish man's man, John Kotkut. John Kutlinski. What the fuck is Little Sound DJ? Well, Little Sound DJ is a software that you can use for your Game Boy. And uh, <laughs> what do you use it for? Music, of course. It's what we do here on this here channel. Why do I want to make music on a Game Boy when I got the machine and all this other cool stuff that is uh, super convenient, super quick, and super amazing? Well, I've always loved the Game Boy since I was a little youngin' boy playing this in the schoolyard, you know what I'm saying? Somebody else had the Game Boy. I got a little bit later when I was about nine years old. I got, I got my first Game Boy Pocket, and I spent so many gosh darn hours that I can't even count them now. Uh, playing Zelda, Link's Awakening, uh, Donkey Kong Land, and other, the more other. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, but right about around now, we getting nostalgic over these pieces. 30 year anniversary, 19th of April. We have the same birthday. When the Game Boy was launched in Japan, so was Jonathan in Sweden. Skipping ahead about 30, around about 30 years or so into the future, and I am already the lucky owner of Nintendo DS Lite. Moi used the emulator to play old Game Boy games with, and used it to run LSDJ just to get the hang of it, before I made any drastic decisions to buy five Game Boys. This is a good way to do it because you get close enough to the experience to build up some more excitement. Fuck, it is something I just love about holding a handheld gaming device in my hands with the thumbs pressing the buttons. When I got to know the software a little better, I started to realize the select and start buttons are way too awkwardly placed on a Nintendo DS. Let me say, look right here. When I'm trying to copy something, you have to press it with your right thumb and stretch over to reach the button. Benjamin Button. Apart from that, the wave samples don't really sound like they should. And apart from that, it's all good. Game Boy Advance SP is another option. I tried this out for a while and what's cool about it? You can change the background color, the theme of the whole LSDJ shebang. Now, this of course also goes for the Game Boy Color, but what's nice about this is the ultra portability factor of it. A con though is that you need to get an extra cable just to connect the headphones and people argue that the original Game Boy has the best sound. When I heard a few years ago I can actually make these bleeps and bloops my own damn self on an actual Game Boy I was super intrigued but I had a look at it and it looked very intimidating all these numbers and it looks like a fucking spreadsheet but Tried it out for, you know, a few minutes, got discouraged, said fuck it, but now I'm back to it, willing to dive in, and I've spent like two weeks with the software now, I've grown an obsession for Game Boys, I have now, my Game Boy count is five, I think, <laughs> within a couple weeks. Let us have a look at what the software looks like, and you get a better idea of how this operates. What you see right here is the song screen. You see the four channels that you had to work with and what pattern or chain is being played on that particular channel. Let us make a new phrase in this here chain and make a snare drum. 
So this is what it looks like when you edit your instruments. We need a shorter decay right here. If we want to make a snare drum with this here noise channel. You have at your disposal two pulse channels that you can set the duty and uh, various settings of to make all kinds of different sounds. And you have one wave channel and a noise channel that we're working with right here. Second digit on the envelope stands for the decay. So we changed it to be a little bit more snappy and the shape changes the shape of the noise. So we just find something that sounds a little bit more like a snare or, or how you would imagine a snare. And this here is the table. Now tables you can get really fun with because you can assign a table to any instrument and uh, also in your patterns you can call up different tables and what these tables do is they change the sound over time so you can change all these different parameters such as the pitch the shape which i did right here see it says so1 sorry about the shaky as fuck camera but yeah so it's basically an automation that's triggered every time you trigger that sound or whenever you choose to call that table in the phrase, if that makes any sense at all. Like I said, this is not a tutorial, it's just an overview for you to see how the software looks like and what you can do with it. So now I just made a new instrument and I'm gonna try and make something more percussion-y. I'm starting off with a hi-hat and then I'm gonna make it more like, I don't know, some type of percussion sound. So I'm just experimenting here with the different shapes and, and the envelopes to see what can be done. And you'll notice also you can have various different instruments playing on each channel. So every time you trigger one note, you can call up a different instrument. So you could have on, uh, say, the first tick, you have one instrument playing. And then when, when the snare comes in, you change the instrument at the same time as that note is triggered. And it plays that instrument that you want to play. <laughs> It sounds a little complicated, but it really is not when you get into it. What I did here, the O command to the right on the right column, that stands for panning. So now I'm panning left and right very quickly, the percussion sound that I made to make a cooler effect, you know what I'm saying? Really, you can modulate the sounds in any way. You can change all the parameters with the tables. Probably still nonsense to you if you're not familiar with this, but have a look here. The column to the right is what note is played. The column in the middle is what instrument should be played when that note is triggered. And the last column is for different commands, changing the sounds in different ways. You could call up a table, for instance, or you could change one of the parameters instantly within the phrase here. And a phrase is basically one pattern. Have a look see here at the table. This is our instrument. We have two columns we can change the parameters on. And we have the transpose column. So what is happening with the sound is it's going really rapidly up and down an octave, giving it that characteristic gem sound. And uh, one of the columns is shaping the wave shape over time as well. You'll notice I also dubbed the kick with a sample of a kick drum. Because on the wave channel, you can use different samples that come in with loaded with LSDJ, different drum machines and such, for instance. If you choose to load up one of these sample kits, you're limited to just that on the channel though. Otherwise, it acts like a wavetable synth, if you know what that is. You can draw in a wave shape or you can program it to play a certain wave shape and uh, it sounds a little different from the pulse channels. And this is something very simple just to show you what the interface looks like. But the joy in this really is trying to see how much you can cram out with just these four channels or rather three channels and a noise channel. These really skilled chiptune musicians, they cram the hell out of the Game Boy. All the juice you can get, you know what I'm saying? It'll, they'll make it sound like there are eight channels going on, but really it's just a lot of sounds in rapid succession and a very effective use of the effects and using every single corner of the capacity of the Game Boy. 
And if you want to go pimp your Game Boy with this type of very shiny screen stuff, because you might recall the Game Boy was not very pleasant to look at. I got a backlight mod and a bivert mod from handheldlegend.com and also this very nice glass display replacement to make a crystal clear Amaze dangerous experience. Takes a little bit of soldering and some fiddling. I'm not going to include the whole process in here because there are so good tutorials out there, especially I think you should check out uh, This Mom is My Computer. This this does not compute. That's a tutorial that I followed and he makes it very clear. Basically, the channel is Sheldon from Big Bang Theory without the asshole attitude and he's fixing all these Game Boys and other electronic and magnetical stuff. applications that I will be a lot of times using it for is just plugging it straight into the motherfucking sound card and using the machine to sample bits and pieces here and there. But you know, I've always had a love for video games, especially what we now call retro video games. I like that old style, OG style gameplay where it's uh, a lot about eye-hand coordination and reflex and shit like that. I love the aesthetics of it, the graphics, the sound, and everything. I love the bleeps and bloops, especially. So... Now we're gonna talk about this. First of all, how do you get this shit? It was, it's not a official software. They manufactured these cassettes earlier, but no more. So you can get your hands on an older version of LSDJ, which is what I have in my hand right here. And I got this for a pretty hefty price. It was about 50 bucks. I, I believe it was 40 or 50 bucks and they can go for even more expensive than that. Lo and behold, plugged it in. I spent like six hours making this amazing hip hop chip tune type of thing beat. And I turned it off, switch it on again. The save file is gone. Turns out battery in this little soma gun is no longer working. Where I got this on eBay, there was no such information. So, you know, Felt a little bit cheateroo there, to be honest. But you can find these batteries, and uh, if you have some basic soldering skills, you can change these batteries, switch them out. But I would recommend, if you want to play this on a real Game Boy, what you should get is one of the cards right here. I'm waiting for mines right now, but there are two different ways. You could either get an empty Game Boy card and a flasher. A device that flashes onto your Game Boy cartridge straight onto the ROM right here or you could get another type of cart that actually has a USB connection right here so you plug it into your computer load the ROM onto it and there you go you have a physical advantageous ready to enter your Game Boy like so I ordered from Ben Venn one of those USB cards. I'll put the link in the description right here. And I ordered also two cards, two empty cards and a flasher from a very nice guy at Inside Gadgets. Shout out Inside Gadgets. Saving the life of a noob engineer. If you wanted to Game Boy, you should look maybe eBay somewhere else and find one chip. The more chip, the more good. Some problems are many easy to fix and you shouldn't have to you know resist on buying one that has a minor problem just because it does 
you can find out how do you fix him. I will also already started beginning to working on a <laughs> I already started working on a new, brand new freshness sound kit based on the, the bleeps and the bloops, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna be taking a while because I wanna make a real good, raw, dope sounds for you guys with this, but it's in the making. And also, have a look see here, in the Beats Clothes Store. This one design should be out. By the time you see this video right now, anytime now, and it's a pretty cool, you know what I'm saying? So you should check it out. And so now we come to the time where it's time to leave you guys right here. Maybe look up on some more info if you find it intriguing and have some good old fun with it myself. So thank you my astronauts, my Patreons, and the motherfucking people still checking out the Dangerous Sound Kit. This infomercial is over right now. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>